son, George, tonight. He never thinks about himself, God. That's why he's in trouble. George is a good guy. Give him a break, God. I love him, dear Lord. Watch over him today. Please, God. Something's the matter with Daddy. Please bring Daddy back. Hello, Joe. Trouble? It looks like we'll have to send someone down. A lot of people are asking help for a man named George Bailey. Ah, uh, yes, George Bailey, you're right. Check this crucial night. Want to send someone down immediately. Who started it again? That's why I came to see you, ma'am. It's the clockmaker's turn again. Oh, Clarence. She hasn't got her wings yet, has she? We passed her up right along because, as you know, ma'am, she's got the idea of a rabbit. Yes, but the faith of a child. Simple. Except for Clarence. You sent for me, ma'am? Yes, Clarence. A man that on earth needs our help. Splendid. Is he sick? No, worse. He's desperate. At exactly 10.45 p.m. Earth time, that man will be seriously considering throwing away God's greatest gift. Oh, I have only an hour to dress. What are they wearing now? Clarence, you need to spend that hour being sweetened with George Bailey. Ma'am, if I should accomplish this mission, I mean, shall I perhaps move my wings? Ma'am, it's been over 200 years now, and I people are beginning to talk. Clarence, you do a good job with George Bailey, and you'll get your wings. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Poor George. Sit down. Sit down, but I... If you're going to help a man out, you'll need to know something about him, won't you? Well, of course, naturally. All right, clear your eyes. There it is, the town of Bedford Falls. Where? I don't see a thing. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You haven't got your wings yet. Now look, I'll help you out. Concentrate. Beginning to see anything? Yes, this is amazing. If you ever get your wings, you'll be able to see this all by yourself. Oh, wonderful. Anything I can do over here? 
just a special way to add on to put money to buy their own dogs. A vast there, Captain Cook. Where are you headed? Off to see Pop, Uncle Billy. Some other time, George. It's important. There's a squall in there. It's shaping up to be a storm. Who is it? Big examiner. I should have called him yesterday. I'm not crying, Mr. Potter. Well, you're begging, and that's a whole lot of work. Plus, all I'm asking for huh? is 30 days more. No, just a minute, son. Just 30 short days, and I'll dig up that 5,000 son. Have you put any real pressure on those people of yours to repay those mortgages? Times are bad, Mr. Potter. A lot of these people are out of work. Then folks, no! These families have children. I, I can't just throw them out on the street. Well, they're not my children. But they're somebody's, Mr. Potter. Are you running a business or a charity war? Well, now. Not with my money. Look, Mr. Potter. Uh -huh. What makes you such a hard skull character? You have no family. No children. You can't even begin to spend all the money you've got. Oh, and I suppose I should give it to failures like you and that idiot brother of yours to spend for me. He's not a failure. You can't talk to my father George, that way. George, George. You're not. You're the biggest man in town. Oh. Bigger than him. Bigger than everybody. They certainly gives you an idea of the Baileys. Don't let him talk to you like that, Pop. All right, son. All right. I can't say I like this Mr. Potter very much. You catch on real quick, Clarence. Why, thank you. It's now Joe. What? Uh, those cops should have been over an hour ago. I'll have them right away, Mrs. Blaine. Where is Mrs. Blaine's box of capsules? Capsules? Didn't I tell you to deliver them right away? Yes, ma'am, I... You can't go around playing these kinds of games. You're hurting my toys, very sick. You're hurting my short ear. You lazy loafer. Miss Gower, you don't know what you're doing. You put the rum in these capsules. I know you're unhappy you, you got that telegram in your set. Put something wrong in these capsules. Just look and see what you did. Look at the bottom of the computer. Poison, I tell you, poison. No. 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 Don't worry, Miss Shower. I won't tell anyone. Not a soul. Hope to die. George. Forgive me, George. George, is this the ear you can't hear? George Bailey, I love you to the day I die. <laughs> Did he ever tell anyone about those pills? Not a soul. Did he ever marry that girl? Did he ever go exploring? Parents, wait and see. An overnight bag, genuine English cow hide, combination locks and brushes, oh. No, 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 no. Now look, look, now look, I, I want a big one. What'd you stop it for? I want you to take a good look at that face. Why, who is he? George Bailey. Oh, you mean the boy that had his ears stopped by the druggist? Yes, Clarence. That's the boy. I like that face. I like George Bailey. Big? See, I don't want a bag for one night. I want a bag for a thousand and one nights. Plenty of room with, for labels from Italy, Baghdad, Samarkand. I see. A flying carpet, huh? I don't suppose you'd like this old second new job, would you? Now you're talking. Gee whiz, I could use this as a raft in case the boat sunk. How much does it cost? No charge. That's my trick here, Flo. Sounds like you said no charge. That's right. What's my name doing on it? A little present from Gower. Came down and took it out herself. She did? What do you know about that? My old boss. Anyway, what boat you sailing on? Well, I'm working across on a cattle boat. A cattle boat? So? I like cows. Thanks ever so much for the suitcase, Miss Gower. Not a problem, George. Bon voyage! Hey, George, don't take any plug nickels. You can't turn your suitcase. Fast there, Captain Cook. You got your sea legs yet? Hi, Ernie. Hi, George. Ernie, I'm a rich tourist today. How about driving me home in style? Hop in, Your Highness. Hop in. The carriage is straight up on my path. Oh, hey, Bert. Would you like? 
Yes. Want to come along for a show in town? No thanks. I think I'll go home to see what the wife's doing. Hey, a family man. Oh, Jim, we have to leave Chicago. Let alone. Oh, Jim, we have to leave Chicago. Joe, why don't you skip ahead and finish? Starry skies. Yes, ma'am.
I know, Pop, I know that. I wish I, I wish I felt that. Good board of pennies here with my Mr. My friend's already finished college. It just feels like if I didn't get away, I'd bust. Yes, yes. See what I mean? You are absolutely right. See what I mean, don't you, Pop? Now, son, this town is no place for a man unless he's going to crawl the bottom. Now you've got salad, son. I've seen it. You get yourself an education, and then get out of here. Pop, uh, do you want a shot? I think you're a great guy. Did you hear that too, Randy? I heard it. It's time when you luck has said it. Uh, I'm going to miss old Annie. I think I'm going to get dressed and head over to Harry's party. Have a good time, son.
Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. Oh, hot dog, just like an organ. It's beautiful. And I told Harry, I thought I was going to be bored to death. You should have seen the commotion in that locker room. I had to knock down three people to get the stuff away. Oh, um, here, you felt tall and down. Do I look as funny as you do? <laughs> I guess I'm not quite the football type. You, you look wonderful. If it wasn't me talking, I'd say you were the prettiest girl in town. Why didn't you just say it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I will. How old are you anyway? 18. 18? Why, well, it was only last year you were 17. Too young or too old? No, no, just right. Your age fits you. Yes, sir, you look a little older without your clothes on. I mean, without a dress. You look older. I mean, younger. You look just, oh, oh. Sir, my train will be. A pox upon me for a clumsy lout. You make your, uh, loose, lady. Hey. Hey. So I was lumbering down the street, down the street, down the street. Then. I'll throw a rock at the old Granville house. Oh no, don't! I love that old house! No! You make a wish and then try to break some glass. See? You gotta be a pretty good shot nowadays, too. Now watch. Oh, George, no. It's, it's full of romance, that old house. I'd like to live in it. In that old place? Uh -huh. I wouldn't live in it even as a ghost. Now watch, on the uh, second floor there. See? <laughs> What'd you wish, George? Not just one wish, a whole half hold. Mary, I don't want to wish you tomorrow, and the next day, and the next year, and the year after that. I am shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm going to see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. Then I'm going to come back here, go to college, see what they know. Then, I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields. I'm going to build skyscrapers a hundred stories high, bridges a mile long. What, are you going to throw a rock? That was pretty good. Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. What did you wish for when you threw the rock? Oh no! Come on, tell me. If I told you, it might not come true. What do you want, Mary? What is it you want? You want the moon? Just say the word. Say that 
to the public, Peter Bailey was the building I know. Oh, that's fine, Potter, coming from you, considering that you probably drove him to his grave. Peter Bailey was not a businessman. That's what killed him. Oh, I mean no disrespect. God rest his soul. And he was a man of high ideals, so-called. But high ideals without common sense can ruin this town. Oh, take the lone dirty bishop, for example. You know, that fellow who sits all day on his brains in his taxi. I happen to know that the bank across the street turned down his loan. But he comes here and we're building him a house worth five thousand dollars. What? Well, I, I actually can handle that, Mr. Potter. You have all the papers here, his insurance, his salary. I can personally vouch for his character. Friend of yours? Yes, sir. Well, there you have it. If you shoot pool with some employee here, you can just come in and borrow money. And what does that get us? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. And all because a few starry-eyed dreamers like Peter Bailey stir them up and fill their heads with a lot of impossible ideas. Now I say... Just a minute, just a minute. Now, hold on, Mr. Potter. You're right when you say my father was no businessman. I know that. Why he ever started this cheap, petty, anti-building loan, I'll never know. But neither you nor anyone can say anything against his character, because his whole life was... In the 25 years since he and Uncle Billy started this thing, he never once thought about himself. Is, is that right, Uncle Billy? You tell him, George. He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me. But he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. Listen, you're all businessmen here. Doesn't that make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? You remember this, Mr. Potter. This rabble you're talking about. They, they do most of the working, and paying, and living, and dying in this community. Is it too much to have them work, and pay, and live, and die in a couple of decent rooms in a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. In my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on, and it's galling you. Anyway, I've said too much. You're the poor here. You do what you want with this thing. Just one thing more. This town needs this measly one horse institution so people can have one place they can go without crawling to Potter. Sentimental hogwash! I want my mountain! Come on, Uncle Billy. George, you shut his big mouth up. You should have heard him. What happened? We heard a lot of yelling. Well, we're being booted out of the business after 25 years. Easy come, easy go. Here is a cab one with You still want me to stay, George? Yeah, I'll be right down. George. You're already a bit late in school. You have to go. Come on, go on. What's going on up there? Oh, don't worry. So what? They're taking us out of business. I can get another job. I'm only 55. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> George, they voted Potter down. They want to keep it going. Hooray! But they've got one condition. Only one condition. What was that? That's the best part of it. They want George here as executive secretary to take his father's place. No, Uncle Billy is the... You can keep him on. It's all right. As secretary, you can hire anyone you'd like. <coughs> Dr. Campbell, let's get one thing straight. I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. I'm going to school. This is my last chance. Uncle Billy here, he's your man. George, go potter of her lives. George, what are we going to do? Professor now, old Phi Beta, Casa Bailey, all American. 
Well, there's an old George Geographic Explorer, Bailey. What? No husky dogs, no sled, and Ma, you haven't changed a bit. Not much changes here, but for fellows, Harry. Oh, am I glad to see you? Well, come on, Uncle Billy's in the other room getting soused in your honor. Come on. Ma, George, wait. I want you to meet someone. This is Ruth. Ruth Dakin. Ruth Dakin Bailey, if you don't mind. What? Well, I warned you I had a surprise. Here she is. Meet the wife. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, what am I doing? Congratulations! Harry, why don't you tell somebody? What's a pretty girl like you doing marrying this two-headed brother of mine? Well, I'll tell you. It's purely mercenary. My father offered him a job. That's wonderful! Well, Harry's cup runneth over. George, about that job. I never said I'd take it. Ruth spoke out of turn. You've held the bag here for four years, and, well, I won't let you down, George. I would like, oh, wait a minute, I forgot the bags. I'll be right back. George, 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 that's all Harry ever talks about. Ruth, what's this about a job? Oh, well, my father owns a glass factory in Buffalo. He wants to get Harry started in the research business. Is it a good job? Oh, yes, Harry. Not much money, but a good future, you know? Harry's a genius at research. My father just fell in love with him. You did too, huh? Oh, well, goodness, this is Harry Bailey, huh? Come on and we'll throw you a party in a bit. Excuse me. Already getting a little tipsy there. But we're going to throw you the biggest party this town has ever seen. <laughs> George, oh boy, oh boy, I feel so good, I could spit in Potter's eye. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I will. I think I will. Or maybe I better come home. Uh, where's my hat? Where's my... Oh, what? Oh, thank you, George, but um, which one is mine? The middle one. Oh, thank you, George, oh boy, oh boy. Now, if you'll just point me in the right direction. Uh, just right down there. Down there? My, Straight down there. My old Irish rose. Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> so, give me one reason why you won't go for Miss Mary. Sure. Sam Wade, right? Huh? Yeah, Sam's crazy about Mary. Well, she's not crazy about him. How do you know that? Did she discuss it with you? No. Well, then how do you know? Oh, I've got eyes, haven't I? She likes like a firefly whenever you're around. Oh. Besides, you're here in the best of and Sam's in New York. And all's fair in love and war? Well, I'm not about war. Mother of mine, I can see you right through you. Right to your back collar button. You're trying to get rid of me, huh? Mm -hmm. Alright, the mother will build in the little house. I think I'll go find a girl to do a little passionate necking. George! Now it's just pointing in the right direction. Good night, Miss Bailey. George, you know perfectly well that's not the right way. Mount Bedford. <laughs> 
smell the pines, watch the sunrise against the peaks. We'll be up there all night. Everyone will wonder where we've been. It'll be a terrific scandal. Georgie, have you gone crazy walking the grass in my bare feet? Why, it's 10 miles up to Mount Bedford. You think just because a girl says she'll make a night of it, you can just- Okay, just forget about the whole thing. <laughs> Never mind this, George, baby uh, fellas. Let's make a real night out of it. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> Money? A little, yeah. Well, listen, I want you to put every cent you 
bought into our stock. And George, I think I've got a job for you. That is, unless you're still married to that broken down building in Lawn. This is the biggest thing since radio, and I'm letting you in on the ground floor. Oh, Mary, Mary! I'm here. Will you tell that guy I'm giving you the chance of a lifetime? You hear me? The chance of a lifetime! You listen here. I don't want any plastics. I don't want any ground floors. I don't want to get married to anyone, ever. I want to do what I want to do, and you're, you're,
everybody just needs to remember this thing is in its black appears. I just talked to old man Potter. He's guaranteed the bank cash payments. The bank's gonna reopen next week. But George, I got my money here. Did he guarantee this place? No, I didn't even ask him. We don't need Potter over here. I'll take my money out now. Me too. No, no. You're Your money is in Joe's house. That's next to Rose's house and in Miss Macklin's house and the Kennedy house and a hundred others. You're lending them the money to build and they're going to pay it back to you as best they can. What are you going to do? Foreclose on them? I've got $242 in here and $242 isn't going to break anybody. Okay, Tom, okay. You just signed the papers. We'll get your money in 60 days. 60 days? Well, that's what you agreed to when you bought your shares. Tom, Tom!
Make sure you pay close attention, okay? Ten. 
now, if this young man were a common, ordinary yokel, I'd say he's doing just fine. But George Bailey is not a common, ordinary yokel. He's a smart, intelligent young man. A young man who, who hates his job, who hates the building at loan almost as much as I do. A young man, the smartest in the crowd, mind you, who has to sit and watch his friends go places because he's trapped. Yes, trapped into frittering his life away, playing nursemaid to a bunch of unwashed garlic eaters. Do I paint an accurate picture, George, or do I exact What is your point, Mr. Potter? My point? My point is I'd like to hire you. Hire me? Hire you, George. I want you to run my properties and manage my affairs. I will start you out $20,000 a year. $20,000. You wouldn't mind, though, uh, living in the nicest house in town, buying your wife a lot of fine things, or uh, taking a business trip to New York or to a year, or once in a while to Europe. You wouldn't mind that, would you, George? Would I? Oh, confound it, man! Are you afraid of success? I'm offering you a three-year contract at $20,000 a year. Starting today, is it a deal or isn't it? Now, Mr. Fodder, I... I... I know I ought to jump at the chance, and... I wonder if you could get me 24 hours to think this over. Oh, sure, sure, go, go talk about it with your wife. In the meantime, I'll draw up the papers. Okay, sir. <laughs> Okay, Joe. So. Okay, Mr. Potter. No. No. No, no, no. I don't right now. I don't need to talk to anyone. I don't need 24 hours. The answer is no. No. Don't. You think the whole world revolves around you and your money? It doesn't, Mr. Potter. In the whole vast configuration of things, I'd say you were nothing more than a scurvy little spider. And that goes for you, too. And that goes for you, too. Now, you have probably already guessed that George never leaves that the calls. No. Mary had her baby, a boy. Then she had another one, a girl. Day after day she worked, turning the old grandma house into a home. Night after night, George came home late to the office. Potter was wearing down hard. Then came more. Mary had two more babies, and still found time to run the USO. Seeing Wainwright made a fortune, plastic cuts were plain. Yes, but George. Oh, yeah, right, George. George was exempt from the draft on account of his ear, but he still fought the battle to better recall. Rubber drives, scrap drives, paper drives. Joe, why don't you show her what happens today? Uh, yes ma'am. Straight ahead to today, the day before Christmas is up, 10 a.m. better recall's time. <laughs> Thank you. 
Take me back in the hurry, bookshop! Everything's fine. Everything's 
1996. It's this old house. It's a drafty old barn. I don't know how we all don't have pneumonia. It's like living in a refrigerator. Why did we decide to live here in the first place and stay around this measly, crummy old town? Why don't you go help the kids with this house? Where are you going? I'm going to go see Zuzu. Hi, Daddy. Well, what happened to you? I want a flower. Hey, well, where do you think you're going? I want to give that flower a drink. All right, give Daddy the flower. I'll give him a drink. Look, Daddy, taste it.
trouble, Mr. Potter. There was some sort of accident. My company's short their accounts. The bank examiner's up here today. I need to raise $8,000 immediately. Ah, so that's what the reporters wanted to see you about. Reporters? Ah, uh, yes, they called me for over to our building at Globe. Nope. I believe there's someone from the DA over there, too. He's been looking for it. Please help me, Mr. Potter. Can't you see what it means to my family? I'll pay any sort of bonus, any interest. If you still want the building alone, I can... Oh, George! Oh, George, could it be that I, uh, a slight discrepancy in the books? No, sir, there's nothing wrong with the books. I've just misplaced $8,000. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> you just misplaced $8,000. Yes, sir. Well, have you notified the police? <laughs> no, sir. I don't want the publicity. Harry's homecoming tomorrow. Oh, they'll believe that one. What have you been doing, George? Playing the stock market with the company's money? No, sir. No, sir. I haven't. Oh, or is it a woman, perhaps? You know, it's the call <laughs> over town that you've been giving money to buy a little dick. What? Oh, it makes no difference to me, of course. But why are you coming to me, George? Why don't you ask Sam Wainwright for the money? I can't get a hold of him. He's in Europe. Oh, and what about all your other friends? I don't have that kind of money, Mr. Potter. You know that. You're the only one in town who can help me. I see. I've suddenly become quite important. Tell me, George, what kind of security would I have? Have you got any real estate? I have some life insurance and a $15,000 policy. <laughs> What's your equity in it? Five hundred dollars. Look at you! You used to be so cocky. You were going to go out and conquer the world. You once called me a warped, frustrated old man. What are you but a warped, frustrated young man? A pathetic clerk, crawling in on his hands and knees, begging for help. You know why you don't go ask that rabble you love so much for the money? Because they run you out of town on a rail. But you know what I'm going to do for you, Joe? As a stockholder in the building and loan, I'm going to swear out a warrant for your arrest. Misappropriation of funds, manipulation, malfeasance. Oh, go ahead, George. You can't hide in a little town like this. <laughs> Well, 
Well, that's a new one. Say what you want about Claire. She's certainly a girl of action. With all due respect, ma'am, all Clarence has accomplished is to get George Bailey soaking wet. It's out of our hands now, Joe. Let's wait and see. I had no time to find more stylish undergarments, you see. My husband gave this to me on my last birthday. I passed away in it. How did you happen to fall in? I didn't fall in. I jumped in to save George. You what? To save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Suicide? And you know it's against the law to commit suicide around here. It's the law against the law to commit suicide where I'm from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven. <laughs> I knew I had to act quickly, you see. I knew if I were drowning, you'd jump in to save me. And you see, you did. So that's how I ended up saving you. Very funny. Your lips bleeding, George. Oh, I got a bust in the jaws and answered a prayer a little bit ago. I'm the answer to your prayer, George. How did you know my name was? <laughs> I am watching you grow up from a little boy. I know everything about you. What are you, some sort of mind reader or something? Oh, no. Who are you, then? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Oddbody? AS2, what's that, AS2? Angel, second class. <laughs> Cheerio, my good man. Oh, martinis <laughs> Ridiculous of thinking of killing yourself for money. $8,000. How'd you know that? I told you, I watched you grow up.
Bert, just listen to me. Ernie, take me over to my mother's house. Bert, 
It's this fellow right here. She says she's an angel. She's trying to hypnotize me. Christmas to you, George. In jail! 
Go home and see the press, the bank examiner, and what are you talking <laughs> Let's host. It's my big brother George, the richest man in town. 